Hi, I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli, creator of The Art of Freedom for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry. I am a coach for musicians and also a violinist. And yet, I have literally played my violin for not more than 15 minutes total since the beginning of June this year when I performed Vivaldi's Four Seasons as soloist with an orchestra in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So it is now <laughs> Halloween. And um, I, whenever I think of that, I, I prefer to think Hallowed Eve. It is, um, yeah, I'd rather think of it as a holy evening than a scary evening. So anyway, that's what it is right now, just by coincidence. And I've been thinking for a number of weeks now, more than a month, that I would like to get back to my violin soon. And yet, the right time just wasn't coming. I got back home after being gone for quite a few weeks. I was in Europe traveling and then in Oregon and then in Alabama. And when I came back home, I thought, okay, I'll get my violin out. And then I hurt my thumb. <laughs> so I actually couldn't play. Uh, but now my thumb is not completely healed, but I can play. And, um, and yet I still wasn't being motivated to get that violin out until now, tonight. And what is, there have been a couple of things that have inspired me that have brought me closer to getting that violin out. One was a recent concert that I attended in which I actually was frustrated by the high levels of tension that were being um, used and displayed by the performers and the pushing at um, that I felt that, um, yeah, it just felt um, like an intense and um, almost aggressive performance. And it made me want to go home and take back my music in a way that would allow me to be present and calm and give myself the time with the beauty of the music one note at a time. And yet I didn't do that. But tonight I watched a documentary about Louis Armstrong, the great jazz trumpet player and singer. And I've always loved great jazz. I find it incredibly um, heartwarming, heart-wrenching. Um, just there's so much soul literally in that music. I actually um, experimented with it a little bit on my own with the violin a few years ago. If you're curious, you can hear me play the minor swing <laughs> on YouTube. I had a, a lot of fun just fooling around with that and imitating Stefan Grappelli's rendition of that. And um, yeah, so that's the only thing I've done jazz-wise, really, except you know, dabbling a little bit when I was a kid. But I've always loved listening to it and watching the documentary this evening put me so deeply in touch with the visceral, existential, um, just core love that I have, that I think we all have really deep down of the inexpressible mystery and beauty and just raw life <laughs> that it's just nature. And um, the wonderful thing about music, of course, is that um, it doesn't require words and you don't even really have to commit to a feeling because when you're really with a feeling, it's constantly changing and um, so you don't you don't have to put words to it you can just feel it and express it and let it move and live through you that's I think what what drives 
great musicians who know how to be in touch with that or maybe just have never lost that natural ability that I think we all have to be in touch with that earthy source of who we are. So um, yes, I found the, the documentary and very moving and not just, it wasn't the story, it was the music and Louis Armstrong's smile with his whole being and yeah, just was really special. And I'm still feeling just how moving it was and how deeply I feel touched by that. Um, it made me want to come upstairs and reconnect with this violin that I have that I have felt connected with not this particular, but well, this particular violin has been mine from the beginning of its life. <laughs> 1986 is when it was created and when I became its first owner and player. It's um, a Sergio Parison, modern Italian violin, which has grown up with me through my teenage and adult years thus far. But I wanted a violin when I was two and got one when I was four. And that's all I was interested in as I was growing up as a kid. Well, that's not exactly true. I was also very much interested in baseball when I was really little, um, but I had to give that up pretty quick. And I was interested in being outside in nature and playing games, of course, and art and uh, friendships and I was always in love with somebody or other <laughs> so relationships were always top priority for me but that violin and the music that could come out of the violin when it was played by someone who knew how to play it uh, it was my favorite thing on earth and then you know it's a it's my past is my past and my relationship with the violin is, is um, complex, to say the least. And I've gone through extreme highs and lows and everything in between with my violin. And I've had periods of um, doing only practicing and performing and not much else. Um, and I've also had long periods like the most recent one, which has been the longest um of not playing the violin at all and doing other things and definitely these days my coaching practice takes priority takes precedence um, and the book i'm writing definitely takes precedence over what i do myself uh, musically with my violin but i am feeling that that age-old call to make my own music again. It's just starting to stir and wake up again. So I thought I would share this um, as I as I just got out the violin case and I'm about to open it up and I'm really just wondering what will come out. And you know, it's been how long? June, July, August, September, October. It's been five months now where, like I said, literally, I've touched my violin not more than 15 minutes, and the only times I got it out was when I wanted to demonstrate something to the one student that I have who comes to my house in person um, with her violin, and so I, you know, I demonstrate and play along with her a little bit. She's a beginner, so we have fun. But other than that, I have not played for myself uh, more than maybe two minutes. <laughs> I think I got it out in July and played for a couple of minutes and then put it away. Just wasn't time. It wasn't the right time for me. So it's been quite a while and I don't know what I'll find. Um, it's always interesting coming back to playing the instrument after having been gone for a while. Um, I always find that there are things that have improved um, surprisingly but I have no expectations. It's also been a long time, so I could feel really rusty. <laughs> I just don't know. 
but the, I know what I do know is that the technical quality, um, even if things feel a little awkward and rusty, um, the reason that I want to reconnect is what's underneath. And it's not about the surface waves and um, things that might not sound that great technically. Um, maybe my sound will be scratchy or notes, I won't find the right notes um, in perfect tune. And But that's not why I'm getting back to the instrument. Why I'm getting back is this emotion that I still feel. You can probably hear it in my voice. I was so moved by hearing just such true, great musicianship that it makes me want to cry. And to know that that's in there and I want to touch it and something in me does want to share it and not just talk about it, which is what I do every day <laughs> and I'm writing about it and I'm very good at talking about it and helping other people access it. But um, it's almost like it's a little much for me sometimes. And um, yeah, so let's find out what happens. I'm gonna pause the video and get my violin out and, and uh, I'll be back. So I just took off my sweater and my earring and took out the violin and I thought I would turn it on again to, to show you. <laughs> my E string has slipped, this shows you that this poor, poor baby of mine has not, <laughs> has not been cared for and, um, yeah, needs some tender loving attention. So it's likely not to hold the pitch perfectly for a little while, but it's time to get it in tune. Now, if you know me, you know, I don't really care, um, what my A is tuned to. I play modern and broke violin and so, yeah, and I've also performed or recorded at a high pitch of A445, I think it was, for the, was it the Isai? Yes, Isai Ballad. Anyway, my point is I don't care what the A is, it's all relative. strings too. Probably need a bow hair, re-hair. All right, here we go. I use my own shoulder, shoulder rest contraption that works best for me, better than any commercial shoulder rest. I teach my students how to make these. <laughs> I have not found a commercial shoulder rest that works for most people. So we make our own. And yeah, you know, before I play, I do feel like musicians have, um, a really deep, real relationship with our instruments and um, <laughs> I feel a lot of gratitude to this violin. I feel like it's been just patiently waiting, <laughs> waiting in the case until the day I decide to pay attention to, I don't know why suddenly I thought her again. My violin is actually androgynous, <laughs> but I guess right now the female part is showing herself. That's the first. That's never happened to me before. Um, yeah, I don't have a name for my instrument. It's never interested me to do that, but yeah, I have a lot of love for this instrument. Um, we've gone through a lot since we met way back in 1986. <laughs> And yeah, part of me wants to apologize for, you know, not abandoning her, but you know, being absent 
for, what did I say, five months? That's a long time. It's a really long time for a violinist to be away from her violin. But at the same time, I know that everything is forgiven. You know, she, she doesn't really mind. I think she missed me too, but she's just happy that I'm here with her again. It's like, you know, we work on our relationships, whether they're human or with our instruments. And, you know, they teach us a lot about ourselves. Relationships are all about learning more about ourselves, our habits. And when we pay attention to them, they really show us who we are and what we need to work on. So I'm, I'm actually really touched to feel that what's coming up is first um, a bit of regret and the desire to apologize, but instantly I realized no need, no need. I, you know, it's okay. It's forgiven. And I've had my reasons, whatever they are, most of mostly unconscious for staying away, but here we are and yeah, we can start again today. So I'm going to go get my other, the other half of <laughs> the other part of this relationship, my bow. Can't forget the bow. I see this bow is in desperate need of rosin. And, um, yeah, it actually probably does not need a bow rehair. It's losing some hair, so I need to kind of clip this. So I don't have, I don't have my nail clippers right now. I'll just leave this little hair straggling here. Um, I, do, I got a rehair um, before the four seasons, and since I haven't played much, I probably don't need a rehair. But um, now I'm thinking of um, the fellow that always rehaired my bow, and he did it the last time before the four seasons. Yeah. He is no longer with us. He has passed away since then. And um, yeah, swinging Jim. <laughs> Jim of strings and things. Uh, I say swinging Jim because my friend David Greenberg uh, wrote a song for him. Um, I say song, but actually it was a uh, kind of a jazzy violin piece he dedicated it to Jim, who was his best man at his wedding. And I always loved that piece. So again, being moved by jazz. Um, actually, it was more like fiddling than jazz, but here we are. Now, I'm also very conscious of what I teach, which is to be present and You'll notice I'm still not playing. I'm really taking my time. I teach my students about something I call the golden period, which is the time before. You could say the last five months have been the time before I get back to my violin. And this time, as I'm introducing this, is also a golden period. And so I want to make the most of the time before and really pay attention and be in the present moment and do what we call constructive thinking and the art of freedom, which employs Primal Alexander, um, an amazing revolutionary way of practicing and learning Alexander technique without touch. Um, we do constructive thinking, which is really about increasing our awareness of ourselves, being really fully present to our experience from moment to moment. So I'm really, you know, paying attention to that the best I can, even as I'm speaking now and sharing these things with you. And as I look at this rosin, and I've got a lot of things here that I'm holding, and I realize I want to put down my violin so that I can rosin this wonderful bow. And, you know, it's an activity we don't usually pay that much attention to, but what a wonderful thing. We take tree sap, you know, sap from a tree that has been you know, melted and put into this beautiful cake of rosin. And, and then we make contact with these horse hairs. I'm noticing there are not a lot. I think Jim didn't like to use a lot of hair when he did his rehairs. 
um, yeah, and we, we put them together and, and I ask myself, what's happening to me as I bring this rosin to the bow and move my arms and feel what I feel? What's happening to me? And that's what Neo Morales, creator of Primal Alexander, calls the primary concern. It's continually reminding ourselves to pay more attention to ourselves and our own well-being and our own experience of the present moment than what we're actually doing. So our, be our being, our well-being becomes more important than the activity we're engaged in. And because we shift our priorities that way, we actually become more conscious, more aware, more present, and more fully in the activity that we're engaged in. I was so much more present to how I rosined the bow than I think I've ever been in my entire life right now, because I'm really curious and paying attention. And even just this, I get goosebumps, just you know, paying attention to what's happening to me as I'm rosining my bow. And there's no right way to rosin a bow. I actually prefer my, my bow with much less rosin than most people. Sometimes I don't rosin, even when I am playing the violin regularly every day, I often don't rosin my bow for a week at a time. I like it light, but today I needed a, a new coat, fresh coat. And as I'm kind of tightening my bow, I'm also realizing how much love I have for this bow. It's not just the violin. I mean, the violin is, is beautiful and you can make sound with pizzicato, but it's nothing like what you can do when you put that bow on the strings. So I'm just feeling immense gratitude for, for what I have, this bow and what's possible, you know, when you bring it all together with awareness and, um, yeah. So what I like to do with my students in our classes is to formulate an intention before we begin. And I like to ask everybody in the class to take a moment to come back to themselves, remember the primary concern, what's happening to me right now as I am here having this experience. And then as a secondary goal, so to speak, how do I wanna show up for myself? And by extension, for me right now, how do I want to show up for myself and for my violin and my bow and for anyone who might be watching this video down the road if I share it? So pausing to contemplate that question for myself, how do I want to show up right now? I feel so much emotion like welling up inside of me and so immediately a strong intention that emerges is to allow myself to feel whatever i feel and um to accept whatever i feel and let it move through me and if it wants to be expressed in any way other than these words right now, maybe through sound, through the violin, or movement, if I want to just move, or sing, or dance, or whatever wants to come through, I want to be accepting and allowing, and I want to, you know, I call my work the Art of Freedom Method for conscious living and masterful artistry, and my goodness, if I could embody even you know, a fraction of that, I would be just thrilled. <laughs> so <laughs> that is an intention to allow myself to feel what I feel. And I feel the constriction in my heart right now. And um, that's okay. That's okay to feel 
emotional and to feel that there's something that's a little stuck. And I wonder, that's where I go next, I wonder, I wonder if that will move and change if I allow this feeling of um, tightness and constriction to transform, to morph, to change, to, to flow. I think one of the biggest reasons that I am a musician and wanted to make music since I was two was because I sensed that that there is like a magical flow that you can step into and it's like a river of beauty that you can just ride and I am open to stepping into that river and finding out if it's still there, you know, after five months. And, and I wonder what will happen. And I, yeah, I'm delighted to find out. So let's see. Ah, oh, who knows? And just to be open to mystery and sound and heart and expression and freedom and... <laughs> came to mind and um, that led me to thinking of all the suffering in the world right now there are so many people who are ill who have life-threatening uh, problems there are there are life-threatening uh, problems that people have, sicknesses and diseases, and um, there are wars, and there's suffering and killing and violence and politics and division and anger and hatred, and there's so much suffering in the world and so much pain. And yeah. So that, a little bit of that came to mind as I was playing and music can be so healing. 
It helps us touch the deep existential pain that we all have inside of us. And um, we're often too afraid to touch or look at or feel. And I think that's one of the biggest blessings of art and what great artists can do for us is to help us feel safe in touching those places that without the the embrace of the sound and the music and um, the good intentions and without that it might be just too much to to look at and so we resist and we block and we just don't go there so what if music allows us a safe way to go there um, as a listener but the way that the listener can be safely led there in the deepest way is when the musician gets out of the way and allows himself, herself to be carried there first or along with the listener. It's, an, it's a shared experience. It's a deep, shared, visceral um, communal experience that happens to the depths that we're comfortable with. And um, I think the the more comfortable the musician is to be vulnerable and to dare to let go and let things flow through, the more the more we dare to extinguish ourselves in a sense, extinguish the personality to get out of the way, to allow the, the supra-personal um, universalness of the pain to come through. As much as there is pain, the opposite is also potentially there. It's like you can't have the one without the other. If you are blocking out the pain, you're also blocking out the joy. And it's scary to open yourself up so much that you feel that depth of everything and to just let that through um, so that nothing else really matters and you know when a, a note goes wrong it's funny um, any of you who know Shardas I started out with somehow the I played the the A on the G string and my brain remembered Shardas the opening of Shardas and I started that note and I mean that that piece I started and then when I made that shift I completely missed the note I was aiming for and it was perfect because it became something new and different and it wasn't Shardas anymore. It turned into something much more rich and immediate and personal because I played that wrong note. And as it happened, I was again reminded of the great jazz musicians who if a note didn't fit, they would use it. And the next things that they would do would have that note in it. And maybe it would modulate to include that note in the new scale. And they made what seemed to be a mistake be right. So we learned that there really aren't any mistakes when you use what happened to learn from and and grow from when you're clear about your intentions and you know why you're doing what you're doing at least to some degree i don't think we ever really know 100 percent why we do the things we do but the first pillar of the art of freedom method is purpose and i do feel strongly that uh, being as conscious as we can possibly be about 
why we're making music and you know that's why I why I asked myself how do I want to show up for myself what do I want as I get back to my violin I think that's really important so that we can uh, learn from whatever it is we're doing when our primary concern is primary it's not possible to be unsuccessful because the primary concern is to find out the truth of what's actually happening to me right now. What's happening to me as I play the violin, as I speak, as I stand here right now, as I share what's meaningful to me with you right now, what's happening? If I can pay attention and be curious and just watch and witness and observe what's actually happening, then whatever happens is for the best and I can learn from it and grow from it. Even if I mess up and some of my notes are scratchy and I completely overshoot the shift that I was aiming for. It's like knowing how to make lemonade out of lemons, right? If you have the intention to see the good in things, to find the, the hidden treasure in uh, the mud and um, when you have that intention that positive intention and you live by it the best you can then everything is food and, and, and potentially nourishing for the soul so i'm happy that this evening was it was the right time. It, was, it wasn't the right time before. And um, I wouldn't have played or shared the things that I've said tonight in the same way if I hadn't had the experience, the experiences that I've had over the last five months, which surely were influenced by not playing my violin. So, I hope this is inspiring for you. Um, the main lesson is, is what I just said, is that when we can make our primary concern being in the present moment and finding the truth about what's actually happening to us right now, from moment to moment to moment, we can't go wrong. And when we apply that primary concern with curiosity and a willingness to take the risk of being vulnerable and sharing the depths of whatever we allow ourselves to feel with others, then that is potentially very healing and it is a communal shared experience. And I hope what I shared with you this evening um, is helpful for you in some small or big way who knows so thank you for watching and being here and um, yes thank you and um, lots of love bye